Hey everyone, I'm really sorry, I made a mistake. So it all started when I painted up these two examples of muzzle burn using AK Interactive's new inks. AK were so impressed they asked me if I could take some shots with the guns in situ on a dreadnought. So I thought, not a problem, I can paint up a dreadnought fast, right? So I put together the Contemptor. It's a fairly easy kit to build, but it does have some annoying places that tend to leave gaps. I also decided to use a scale modeling technique on the shoulders to add a bit of extra texture in there. So you flood the area with plastic cement, and then you stipple it with a hard brush to create a texture similar to cast iron. With the model built, I went with my usual primer, and once I thought it had dried, jumped straight into the hazard stripes. Hazard stripes are hard to paint by hand, so I quickly masked them up. A top tip here is to line up the stripes of masking tape directly next to each other across the whole of the area that you're going to be painting, and then remove every other one so they have really nicely evenly spaced gaps. To start the hazard stripes, I sprayed AK Deep Brown, which gives a good base for the yellow. I follow this up with AK White Ink and highlight down to the bottom of the panels, leaving some of the brown showing at the tops. Once this was done, I moved on to Games Workshop Imperial Fist Contrast Paint to use as a filter. This three colour combination makes for a really nice rich yellow, and it's similar to what I've used in a previous video for Imperial Fists. With that done, we can remove our striping masking and we've got beautiful hazard stripes. Perturabo would be very proud of us. With those done, we're going to mask off the whole of the shoulder pads with more masking tape before we spray the metallics. We're going to start with Vallejo Metal Colour Gunmetal Grey and give that a coat all over the model and then we're going to follow it up with Vallejo Metal Colour Dura Aluminium sprayed from above. This is going to give the model a really nice subtle shine from above and it adds a nice element of realism to the model. Once those are dry, it's time to remove our masking and here is where it all went wrong. Hello darkness my old friend. The masking removed a massive chunk of the hazards that we just painstakingly painted and masked off. Well that sucks, but what are we going to do here? So. One of the things I want to show you in this video is when mistakes happen, it's not the end of the world and we can come back from them using different techniques, especially if we're looking at weathered models rather than really super tidy ones. Obviously, if you're painting a super tidy model, you kind of got to go back to the drawing board here or, you know, just go down the grimdark route like I do. So we'll go on to the rest of the model first. Uh, I'm going to finish the metals by giving them a wash with AK Black Knight Deep Shade. This is a really nice thick wash that gives our metals a grimy grubby feel. We're not too worried about this being completely smooth all over. If we do get some really big areas of pooling, we can use a wet brush to help thin the paint and move it around the armor panel to make it a little bit more smooth, but don't worry about it too much. It does help to work on one panel at a time here. When we've done that, we're going to differentiate a bit between the internal mechanical areas of the model and the armor plates. So what I'm going to do is give those mechanical areas a wash with AK Pure Grime Deep Shade, which will give us that nice subtle difference. Following on from that, we're going to break up this metallic beast by blocking in some areas in black. So I'm doing both the knee pads here and some of the areas of the guns. Then we're going to apply some transfers. So if you've never applied transfers before, what we do is we first cut them out with a hobby knife carefully, fold up and soak some kitchen paper with water, and then pop the transfers on there to soften up and release from the backing sheets. I find the best way to apply transfers to the actual model itself with two products called Micro Set and Micro Sole. These, we're going to use one after the other. So first we apply Micro Set to the area that we're going to pop our transfer onto. Then we take the transfer, slide it off of the backing sheet using a brush, put that onto the area where we want the transfer to be. This is probably a good moment to move it around a little bit. And then we're going to apply Micro Salt directly on top of the transfer. And this is going to soften it up, help it adhere to the model and the shape of the model better. So with all that done, I think I've put it off long enough. And now it is time to address that big chunk of missing paint. 
So we're going to lean into that narrative here of the paint peeling away from the model, and we're going to make this a big rusty patch. So the first thing we're going to do is going to apply some Games Workshop Martian Iron Crust to the area, and this is going to do two things. So first of all, it's going to effectively prime that unpainted plastic that we've got there, so you know we're going to be able to apply other paints afterwards better. And second is that it's got a really nice texture and colour to as a beginning for rust. To sell the rust on the model, I'm going to use two products. Both of them are from the AK Wargame Washes range, Dark Rust and Extreme Rust. These are both enamel products, so, so don't use your best brushes when working with these, because it will ruin them, and make sure to wash out any brushes that you do use with enamel thinner. With them being enamels, they have a long working time as well as a low surface tension, so they're great for rusting up all the rivets and recesses on the model as well as this rusty patch. And if we go too far, we can reduce them down with the enamel thinner. We're going to start with the dark rust quite heavily and we're going to apply it to any of the recesses and in this big rusty patch we're going to basically wash the whole area with it and then we're going to follow up with the extreme rust more lightly and as I said because these have long working times we can mix them together on the model to create nice streaks and other effects and create a nice variety of rusty colours actually on the model itself rather than mixing them away in a palette for example. In addition to the rusty patches you know we can do some streaks here and there and you know generally give the model a nice rusty overall look. You know what, I think I might have redeemed myself here. With the weathering out of the way, we're going to work on the base, and I'm going to do a simple resin pour. So I start by making a donut out of milliput uh, on the base, and we smooth it down on the sides, inside and out. Then we're going to press the dreadnought firmly into the base on the top edge of this donut so that he's standing on the lip of this little shallow or crater or whatever it might be. We're then going to follow that up by using AK Dry Earth Paste on the whole of the base to give it a nice starting texture and colour. And while that's wet, we're going to dip it into some nice sandy dusty rocks. While that's still drying, we're going to add some AK Liquid Pigments to the base and lower legs of the model. I'm going to use the dust and light European earth colours because they work really well in this sort of like dusty, deserty feel. And we apply them directly from the pot. Whilst that's all drying to one side, we're going to mix up our two part clear resin. So this one is from AK and it comes in two bottles. And you mix it in a two to one ratio. I use these little shot glasses because they've got increments on the side to measure in, which is quite nice. And also they're disposable, so you can just chuck them away at the end. Now stir it gently with a toothpick. When you're stirring these together, it's really important to make sure you do it gently so that you don't add any air bubbles into the resin and into your final product. To add some colour to the resin, I'm going to put two drops of the AK Green Dark Deep Shade, and then we're going to mix that up again too. And when it's fully stirred, we're going to carefully pour that into the base again to avoid any bubbles. I'm then going to pop it under a jar to stop any dust getting into it whilst it's setting overnight. And it is done. Here is our finished red. The resin did spill over the edges of the base a little bit, which I'm actually really pleased with how the finished base looks. It looks almost like a wet sand look. And I've painted obviously the base rim. I think the areas where the paint came off has actually turned out really nicely and it's forced us to try something which I wouldn't have normally tried. You know, I wouldn't have normally thought, oh, let's yeah, apply a load of texture paint onto this area of the model and then rust it up. But I really like how it looks. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed the video everyone and I think if there's one thing you take away from this video is that hopefully if you do mess something up that it's not the end of the world and you can find a solution for it to make the model still look really nice without having to go back start again potentially lose interest in the model and you know give up and never touch it again in their life. I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give a like and subscribe to the channel it really means a lot and helps support what I'm doing and thank you a lot and I'll see you next time. Bye!